Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Lindsay. So good to see you. Uh, today I actually wanted to do a little bit of a historic home. Um, I really didn't know what to do for this, you know, neighborhood in The Sims. And so I decided I don't want to do another Victorian or another, you know, I think this is more like a southern style area. It's very like plantation-y. I didn't want that, um, obviously. And so I decided to do for this whole neighborhood a very uh, mid-century modernist aesthetic. And LA is very much known for this kind of architecture. This is one of According to Wikipedia, one of the most well-known houses in LA. I don't know how true that is. I don't think most people who just casually enjoy architecture would know about this. Uh, but this is the Stahl House. The Stahl House, uh, aka Case Study House Number Two, was uh, was built for the Stahl family by Pierre Coing. It's located in the Hollywood Hills. Uh, it has a great view overlooking Hollywood. Fantastic, fantastic. Um, but yeah, it was... It's been featured in a a few films uh, used a lot in for fashion, film, advertising, stuff like that. To be expected from a house with that kind of view in LA. Um, quite a few movies. The first one I could find that it was in was uh, smog in 1962 two years after the house was finished and then uh the last thing i saw it came up as being featured in was where truth lies in 2005 apparently it's also been in in video games like san andreas gta san andreas i should say uh where it's one of the safe houses or one of the safe houses is based off of it which is pretty cool. I think that's pretty neat uh, to base it off a real house. I don't know how true it is. I, I did look it up to kind of see how true that was. And it does look pretty similar, but I wouldn't say it's like an exact copy, you know? Um, I tried to do the best I could at recreating this, but you know, we do have only so many shots of the interior just like on Google. I know that you can do um, house tours, but uh, obviously I wasn't gonna book a house tour of the stall house just to build it in The Sims. That would be... that would be insane. <laughs> Maybe I'll do it for a different historic house, who knows. I'll be like, yeah, I'm just gonna go there walk around your house, take a few pictures. But yeah, it does have a quite an interesting history. Uh, there was actually a book that was released about this house a little while ago. I I think like, it was this year actually, it was the book released, which very interesting. Apparently the Stahl family had to sell their house at one point. From what I found on Google, they do own it now. Which is cool, you know, that they got their house back, their childhood house back. But yeah, the the reason why I wanted to make this video actually was to kind of talk about the pink sauce again, not just talk about historic architecture, because it, it's not something that I know a lot about, you know. It's it's on. It's a significant, you know, architectural piece. It's in. It's it's actually a L.A. historic cultural monument which is pretty cool. Uh, I wanted to talk more about the pink sauce though because I did a video about it and there's been more drama, basically. The the creator of the pink sauce, Chef P, and a TikToker who did a review of the pink sauce got invited onto the Karamo show, which uh, if you don't know, Karamo is a member of Queer Eye, which is a very popular Netflix show that basically goes in and helps fix up people 
who maybe aren't doing the best in life or want to do more or better. They basically go in, help them figure out what they can change, they redo their house, they give them physical makeovers, the whole nine yards. And Karamo is supposed to be the the guy who kind of gives them the emotional help. He kind of acts as like a therapist, a little self-helpy. Um, I don't think he has a doctorate or degree or anything, so obviously he's not like an actual like therapist, but he kind of has like motivational coach kind of feel to him. And it makes sense for him to have a talk show. It very much does. Uh, I think he has that kind of personality and I think he's supposed to be kind of like the taking over for in the absence of now Ellen, you know? Uh, in the absence of Ellen, we now have Karamo. In any other world, this would make sense. But for some reason, with the pink sauce, uh, I don't know if anybody on his team actually took time into figuring out exactly what happened with it. It's such a bizarre episode. It aired like a month ago, so I am a little bit late to the party, um, I admit. But it just, it, f it felt so bizarre, so odd. People were saying that he, it felt like he was gaslighting the, the people who reviewed the pink sauce and gave it a bad review, which is such an odd thing to say when uh, you know, you're a customer, it's just overall, I don't think he knew what he was talking about. I think maybe he, I, I have a feeling he only really talked to Chef P and then built his entire idea of what was happening based around what she told him, which is probably not the best idea. Also, I, it's just a very rich person mindset to take the the word of the business owner over the word of, you know, the consumer, the person who actually bought the product and felt that they were wronged in some way. Um, especially when that product could have easily given people an illness. Because uh, that was the whole complaint with the pink sauce, was it wasn't about, like, the well, for some people, it was about the taste, but it was about the negative health concerns that people had. These, these products weren't labeled correctly. People aren't sure exactly what was in it. It tasted like ranch, according to some people, but it didn't say that it contained any dairy or eggs, which you kind of need to make a ranch. Um, it didn't have correct dates or labels for expiration or lot numbers. It was shipped in bags and stuff. These are all actual concerns that you would have if you're eating something, you know? You have to know when <laughs> when this stuff was made just in case something happens, God forbid, you know? But he basically told the <laughs> He told the consumer who went on that, you know, it was basically her fault uh, that Chef P was getting harassment, which it absolutely was not. Let's make that very clear. It was not her fault that Chef P was getting harassment. There were a lot of people who were reviewing the pink sauce, um, and it's not one person's job to stop everybody from harassing when this was a very large thing. This was not a little thing that happened on the internet. This was all over the place. Everybody was talking about it, not just this one lady, right? Not just this one lady on TikTok who gave it a very mild review. She said that it was okay, you know? The most that she said that she was going to take it to a, um, to a lab to get tested for, um, any kind of bacterial growth, like botulism. But other than that, you know, it was, she was like, yeah, it's okay. It doesn't taste very good, you know? There were other people saying a lot worse things, yet she got 
probably the worst of it on this show and I do think she kind of needs an apology. Um, the, the show deleted the episode off of everywhere basically, which obviously uh, everybody was basically turned on the show <laughs> from what I've seen. I, I went on TikTok to see other people's reactions to it and a lot of people were not happy. They were not happy at all with how it was handled, how Karamo addressed and talked to the person. Um, even Chef P at one point told her, like grabbed her hand and told her that she's not special, uh, even though the which saying that she's not special was in response to was the fact that she didn't get an email talking about the recall of the product which chef p in that same episode said that she did and that she emailed every single customer if you're saying that you're emailing every single customer but saying mm, you're not special that's why i didn't email you that's an odd thing to say that's an odd thing to say that's a very it's very targeted like it felt like they brought her on just to bully her um which, you know, okay, <laughs> like as as a as a host, Karamo, especially as like a self help host, Karamo should have put a stop to that. Like telling someone that they're not special and that's why they didn't get a recall email. That's insane to me. It's insane that nobody thought mm, this is a bad idea maybe <laughs> maybe don't say that but it's not my show it's not my show maybe maybe that's the types of vibes that you know that he wanted to give the uh, go on to Karama show and get told that you suck and it's your fault that this woman got harassment uh, even though she was selling a literally dangerous product literally dangerous could have hurt people whatever uh but yeah i i mean the lady she's doing well on tiktok it's not like she had a small following they literally invited her on because she has like i think i saw like fifty thousand something followers so it's not like she's doing bad it, people are very much like on her side she's made a lot of tiktoks about the whole situation so i'm not worried about her <laughs> you know She's she's doing fantastic. She's doing great. Um, she'll continue doing fine. But I do think she still needs to get an apology from the show, from the way that they portrayed her, because I I have a feeling that Karamo took Chef P's side just because she she looks very eccentric and she looks like she would have a good social media presence in the future she's working with a large company now um she's working with dave's hot sauce and if you didn't know to remake the hot the the pink sauce which is no longer pink which i think kind of ruins the whole thing um but i i get it you don't it's kind of a yellow now um which I think kind of ruins the whole aesthetic appeal. Apparently the taste is also very different now, which is a little concerning. Um, apparently it tastes more like a, like a balsamic, like a, a fruity vinaigrette is from what I heard from reviews instead of the ranch, the ranchy kind of taste that it had before, according to a lot of people. So, you know, if that's your kind of thing, tastes less like a dipping sauce, more like a, more like a salad dressing. But again, I'm never gonna buy it, especially after that, that whole interview with Chef B. Um, she's not taking responsibility. It's very much a I take responsibility, but kind of situation, which is ridiculous. It you sold a faulty product. Of course, Karamo's gonna take her side. You know, she's the girl boss who could have murdered people, you know? 
I'm I'm not surprised by the whole thing. I just it it's always gonna be it's it's a class solidarity thing, you know, like she's now making money, he makes money. Of course they're gonna take each other's side over the random person who buys it, you know? The the people who bought it did need to be told about the fact that these things weren't packaged correctly and it's not the person who buys it buys its fault for not reaching out before posting a review. You know, the relationship between a consumer and a brand should end when you buy the product, right? You buy it, I give you the money, and that's it. Unless something goes wrong, I should never have to hear from that company again, or I shouldn't have to talk about that company again. The product should be like what you buy, you know? That's it. And the fact that Karamo put it on the consumer's to not talk about a product that they bought that was faulty is insane to me. Again, it's not their fault that Chef P didn't know what she was doing. It's not their fault. They were trying to protect other people from buying and making the same purchasing mistake that they did. It, <laughs> it just is very, very bizarre, very bizarre. I'm I'm just, I'm a little bit heated about it. It's been like a month since this episode came out, but uh, it's it's it is frustrating, you know, because he's supposed to be like this motivational speaker, like I said, and the fact that he just let her, Chef P talk all this shit to the person who bought her product is absurd. It's absurd, and I think he really showed his ass and who he actually is as a person. Um, I wouldn't trust Karamo as far as I can throw him, especially when it comes to interviewing people who have done wrong. Uh, they were trying to do this whole like cancel culture narrative. Who gives a shit about cancel culture? Cancel culture is not real. Everybody who gets canceled still has a career. Chef P is literally working with one of the most famous one of the most famous sauce brands in America. Who cares? Who cares? Not me. She'll live. I guarantee she'll live. She's fine. Uh, anyways, deep breaths. <laughs> We're moving on back to the stall house. I hope you guys enjoyed the build. These are the pictures of the end. And I will see you all next time. Bye!